today's webinar will be hosted by Ian Stevens uh, from Enrich Management Group. Those of you who joined us last year, you would have joined a presentation also run by Ian. Uh, this is another presentation on the generation gaps and you would be familiar with Ian. He is a speaker with a passion for the practical. He's also been voted in the top 10 Australian business and motivational speakers. His messages inspire people to change and equip them to follow through. He presents powerful messages on peak performance, sales effectiveness, customer service, team building and dynamic leadership. He is also the co-author of The Seven Step Pathway to Mastery, a best-selling read around personal and organisational change. So without any further ado, I'll hand the microphone off to Ian. Thanks Sarah and welcome everyone. Um, yeah, by 2020, I just thought I'd share with you that 46% of the workforce is going to be Gen Y. Um, so, you know, important as leaders, managers, motivators that we know how to actually lead and manage all of the generation types. Uh, but I'm suspecting that some of you are here to understand more about Gen Y because they are becoming more um, you know, prevalent and they will be 46% of the workforce. So let's understand in this webinar more about each of the generation types, um, get an idea on how to manage and motivate them because they come from different eras and they are motivated by different things. And I'll open it up in the last uh, 15 minutes to some, some tips and tools about how you have to adjust your, your leadership and management style to each of the generation types and then we can finish with some, uh, some Q&A, some question and answers. Uh, let's keep it a little bit informal. If you have got a question along the way, then, then certainly um, send Sarah a message and we can, we can deal with that at the time or I might want to park it until later if, um, if we're going to cover off on some of that, uh, that content. So let me briefly just earn the right to be here. Um, in, in terms of speaking on this subject. My background, as a 24-year-old, I was made a state manager with a national insurance company. So, you know, having to have people who were ranging from in their 60s towards retirement through to, you know, 17-year-olds just joining the, uh, the workforce. And I guess that's where I got a little bit of an insight into how you've got to change your approach with the different uh, generation types. Um, nowadays I'm working, you know, my typical month would be doing a whole series of training workshops around leadership and motivation. Um, I'm a master practitioner in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So that's about understanding what's going on in the neurology and with the value set of the person that you're coaching, leading or inspiring. And certainly the different generation types, there's some common themes running through there that we'll have a look at and understand um, this afternoon. Um, I guess by way of earning the right to, um, I employ Generation X's and uh, Generation Y. Um, I have, I'm the son of a baby, of baby boomer parents. Um, I, I'm the father of a Gen Y and a Gen Z, which is the younger generation um, after Gen, uh, Gen Y. So hopefully all of that kind of earns the right to be, uh, to be uh, presenting here in, in this webinar. Now I just want to kick off with a couple of guiding principles before we, um, before we get started. Um, in terms of understanding the individual, you know, knowing the individual employee and their beliefs and values is actually more important than understanding what generation they belong to. The generation types will give you some insight, but it doesn't override the fact that we are all unique individuals who have a different set of beliefs and values that govern, um, you know, govern our behaviour. So just a little guiding, um, guiding principle there as, uh, as, as such. There are some presuppositions. So you can presuppose the following is true about generation diverse, diversity. And that is that each generation has its own distinct set of values, views of authority, you know, their sense of loyalty, their expectations of what they're looking for in a, in a work environment. And that's where we'll actually drill in and, uh, and play. And in fact, we might just head to the first poll and just get a little feel out of the people online, um, you know, where you actually fit into the scheme of things. And, and take the dates with a little grain of salt. There's people who are on the cusp, but um, depending, I've just taken the, the Bureau of Statistics figures here in terms of the, uh, the years that go with each of the generation. But if you could respond to that little uh, poll in question, you know, which generation do you actually fall into, A, B or C, 
and let's get a, uh, a feel for the percentage of the population we've actually got online here. Let's see how those results come through. Yep, they're coming through quite quickly. So mm -hmm. we'll close that poll now and then we'll share those results every, with everybody and there's a clear winner, I think. Right, okay. All right, so we've got 47% uh, uh, Gen X on the line, 20% uh, fit into the baby boomers and then we've got 13% 13, uh, 13 of, uh, of Gen Y. And then maybe there's some who fall out of those categories potentially, but um, you've got your traditionalists who are actually older than the baby boomers and then Gen Z as they referred to who are uh, younger than the, uh, the Gen Ys. All right, so um, with, with that in mind, let's have a little look at um, understanding a bit about human behaviour and why people do what they do and set this up for understanding why the generations do what they actually do. So I'm going to quickly go through a little about understanding human behaviour. If you were with me on my last webinar, I talked about these logical levels of change or slash influence, if you're looking to influence people. Now I'm assuming you're on this webinar because you have to lead, coach, manage, inspire, um, you know, people from the various generations. But let's look at a universal law to do with, uh, with human behaviour. Uh, the Logical Levels of Change by a guy called Robert Diltz, D-I-L-T-S, Robert Diltz. You get any good book on uh, neuro-linguistic programming, which is really just a practical form of psychology and understanding life. He will, he will present a model in a ladder format, and you can see it there down the bottom. The results we get is driven by our behaviour, the next rung up. So in other words, because what you say and do is going to produce the results you get or the environment that you create with your people. Now let's go up another run to capabilities. People can only ever do what they know. So you know this is the reason why we jump online to these sorts of webinars, we read books, we go to seminars, we listen to tapes, we do anything that can expand our capabilities, our skills and our knowledge. Um, or your epistemology if you want a new word. There's a new word for some people today. Your, epistemolo your epistemology, the sum total of your knowledge, skills and experience to date that has shaped who you are and that governs what you will do. You can only do what you know, so that capability rung and expanding it is critical, uh, particularly in these times where you know technology, look at this, we're online doing a webinar now and it's becoming the norm. You've got to stay up with everything. Uh, because that drives the behaviour you do, which drives the results you get. Now, let's look at that fourth rung. This is a critically important rung, and I'm playing here because the different generation types have formed different beliefs and values. And this rung is higher in your psychology. What I'm doing here is the higher we go up this ladder, the deeper we're actually getting into the psyche of an individual or the culture of a team. Um, you know, a team, a company has its own set of beliefs and values as well. We call it corporate culture and that drives two rungs down what they actually do. And that's actually an interesting little distinction to go through life understanding that your behaviour is driven two rungs up by your beliefs and values. You will do things in alignment with your beliefs and values and the different gen types have different beliefs and values that have been shaped out of different experiences that have actually occurred to them. So we're going to double click on this rung and have a closer look at it from the perspective of the different gen types. And then uh, just to mention it, you've got that higher rung which is our sense of our mission, our identity, our purpose, our, our role if you like. And part of your mission and purpose if you lead, coach or inspire others is to um, you know, make sure you understand a little about the different generation types and how to adjust your leadership or coaching style accordingly. Or perhaps some of you are just here to um, you know, understand more about your one-up who might be in a different generation type than you and sometimes you're like ships passing in the night and you don't get them, you don't understand them because they're actually operating to a, a deep-seated set of different beliefs and, uh, and values. So, um, you know, we, we all have different beliefs and values and they motivate us, but here's something that we all have in common. And I'll just move to the, uh, the next slide because we are humans on this planet 
having a human experience. And at the end of the day, there are only two things that motivate us at a primal level. Um, things that we're going to move towards because we want to gain, we want to get, we want to obtain certain things, or things that we want to avoid and move away from. Um, so this is the old pain or gain continuum. And all of us at a primal level, you know, you go way back to Neanderthal man days, um, saber-toothed tiger, you better get the hell away from that real fast or it's going to tear you to shreds and eat you. So we're motivated to get into action and move away real quick. Um, whereas other times we want to move towards things that will gain us pleasure. So it's the old pleasure, pain, continuum. Um, and at a deep-seated level, this inspires all of us. Um, now, from a motivational perspective with the generation type, there are certain things that Gen Y wants to move towards and what they want to move away from. Uh, and that's the same for all of the generation types. So we'll pull this apart and just understand a, a little more uh, about each of them. Now, I notice we did have um, some Gen Y online at, at this webinar. So here's a little bit of feedback. Don't, don't take this personally, but uh, Generation X actually see you as a little bit arrogant and self-entitled. Now, as I say, don't take it personally, but here's the feedback from the Generation Xs. And the baby boomers actually think you have no work ethic. So there's a little bit of feedback from the other generation types. Um, however, uh, you know, I'll give, I'll give you a, a chance to have some feedback as well. Gen Xs, and we've got closer to, what was it, 47-odd percent uh, online from the Generation Xs. So Gen Y actually think you're a bunch of whinges, just to give you a little bit of feedback. And the baby boomers, well, they think you just want them to die so you can get your hands on their money. You know, that's basically what the, uh, the baby boomers think of, uh, of, of Gen X. And, um, and then for the baby boomers we've got online, and we've got some of them as well, here's a little bit of feedback from everyone, from all the generation types. Um, other than yourselves, of course, that they actually think you're self-absorbed workaholics who are just obsessed with alcohol and money. So I don't know if that rings true, but there's a little bit of feedback from the, uh, from the other generation types for you. Now, with that in mind, let's jump in and have a look at each of the generation types, what's motivated them, um, what's kind of shaped them into valuing the things they value, always keeping in mind that disclaimer that a person's individual values are more important than what generation type they belong to. All right, so let's rock and roll and have a little look at, uh, at each. And, and certainly if you've, you've got any questions, then, uh, then yell out. But every generation type has a different map of the world. They view things differently. Their beliefs and values are actually filters which shape their actions. So if we go back to that Bilt's Ladder example, um, all decisions people make about the behaviour they're going to do, um, actually they, uh, that's driven by their values two, uh, two rungs up. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look at each of the gen types and, uh, and, uh, and move on. All right, so baby boomers. Now, you will hear contradictory advice um, around the, the years. Um, depending on which expert you're listening to. I am going to go with the Australian Bureau of Statistics and here's, here's what they talk about. That the, the baby boomers are from around the 1946 to the 1961 era. Uh, some people are on the cusp um, of, uh, of, of two generations. But here's some of the influences that have shaped the baby boomers and the things that they therefore, um, they, they therefore value. You know, suburbia, the growth of the suburbs. Uh, TV came into existence during their era. They watched Vietnam. They, um, they went through Watergate, uh, protests, human rights movements, uh, you know, drugs and rock and roll. Um, you know, they, um, you know they, they lived through the 70s as, um, as um, you know, as teenagers and adults. So uh, they, they know all about the 70s and what went on there. And here's some of the characteristics. Idealistic, 
competitive and they actually learn to, uh, to question authority. But they do have this key word around uh, optimism. So they're a fairly optimistic bunch if you talk to, uh, talk to baby boomers. Now after we understand a little about each, I then want to layer in some tools and tips about how to work effectively with them or manage or motivate them. So, you know, here would be a, um, a, a few pictures that, you know, the baby boomers can, can, can relate to. Um, you know, Elvis, these sorts of things were, were big on their agenda as they were, uh, as they were experiencing the first 30 years of, uh, of their life. So influential people. It's the me generation. Um, it's about you know money, it's about title, it's about recognition. Now when I say money, baby boobins online, don't take offence, money is not important to all of us as a motivator. Uh, we all take it, absolutely, but it doesn't necessarily um, fire us up. But as a rule, you know, the baby boomers were about building a stellar career and thankfully, um, particularly given my parents are baby boomers, that they were, you know, putting some money away, investing it, and um, and and really wanting to pass something along to the next uh, to the next generation. So there's a little bit about the uh, about the baby boomers. Let's have a look at Gen X, who are loosely around that 61 to 1980 period. Um, you know, big influences. They grew up with Sesame Street. Um, MTV, uh, Game Boy, I mean how outdated is that now? My son would look at Game Boy and just shake his head. Um, yeah, personal computers, um, divorce rate tripled. Um, someone said to me yesterday, what's the main reason for divorce? And the answer apparently was marriage. Um, so, you know, a lot of people were getting married, it was the flavour of, uh, of this generation and then also the, uh, the divorce rate tripled. So characteristics, they can be a bit eclectic, they're, they're resourceful people, they'll, uh, they'll tend to find a way, uh, pretty self-reliant. They actually developed a little, little bit of distrust of, um, of institutions and therefore question authority. Um, and even though they're not the young generation, don't misunderstand Generation X. They can be highly adaptive to change and, uh, and technology. Just give them a little bit of time to get on, uh, to get on board. But they develop this key, um, this key word of, of scepticism. You know, they would question things as a, as a rule, except um, as distinct to, uh, to just accept it. So let's have a look at what might have, you know, here's some pictures that the Generation X's online will, uh, will relate to because these sorts of things were going on as they were growing up and really shaping their value set. Now, and keep in mind here, regardless of what generation you belong to, all of the different forms of psychology will agree with this. 80% of your beliefs and values intact by age seven based on things that have shaped your life in those informative years. So this is why, as a generation, you know, the things that have shaped a generation's lives um, mean there's a, there can be a commonality in terms of our beliefs and values. That's why this whole, you know, I, I guess, um, area of generation types and understanding them has, has kind of evolved. Um, so Generation X, they watched their parents become obsessed with their careers and so they kind of brought in a little bit of this need for work-life balance and, uh, and freedom. So um, they like to be a little more flexible and they want to build a portable career. Um, you know, what's important to me and Karina, both Gen Xs, is that our career, we can, we can run our business and our life, um, you know, whilst we're in Paris just as effectively as we can if we're here. So, and we want a portable career where we learn lessons that we can take somewhere else with us uh, because we're probably going through three or four major changes in our career, whereas the baby boomers have been very loyal to one career as a general rule. So these are just general rules and, uh, and supper, um, suppositions as such. So um, there's a little about the, uh, the Gen Xs and from a, a couple of messages we're getting, people seem to be resonating with, uh, with, with what I'm saying. Uh, and this is not just me saying it, this is you know, a school of experts that have been studying this for, for years and I'm just trying to 
summarise it into a, um, you know, a succinct little presentation for you. So there's a little about the, uh, about the Gen Xs. Uh, let's move and have a look at Gen Y. So the influences expanded technology big part of their world it suddenly went boom you know facebook they've never not been without the world wide web it's always been here for their lifetime um, you know so expanded technologies they've watched natural disasters um, violence gangs they have grown up connected into cnn watching everything unfold live on air as it's happening so, you know, for this generation, sending something by the post would be like what the baby boomers can relate to. For Generation Y, email is the new snail mail. It's too slow. You know, they're texting, they're tweeting, they're Facebooking. You know, email is just too slow for them. So just get that in context in terms of how they like to be communicated with. Um, and, you know, I know, because uh, I've got a, what, 18 going on 19-year-old daughter, and what's important to her is personal safety. And you can see there in some of the characteristics on this slide that personal safety is number one concern. So she's growing up seeing every day, you know, what's happening with people being bashed at certain train stations. So she's making decisions to go places only if she's got a group of people with her in some context because personal safety is, uh, is her number one concern. So they're very cyber literate and they're also very realistic about, um, uh, you know, about life. So there's a key word for, uh, for them. So, you know, here's the sort of things that have really shaped and influenced them over the course of their life. And they are so connected in, it's, it's not funny. You know, I watch I watch my daughter as she studies, um, heading into uni, but in year 12 last year, she would be studying, she would be on Facebook, she would be texting and tweeting at the same time with her iPod ears and, and having the television going at the same time. Um, and, you know, as a Gen X or a baby boomer, you might look at that and say, how the hell can they study effectively doing that? Well the results are on the scoreboard. You know, she's done brilliantly. She seems to be able to do it. They've evolved with all those distractions and connections just around them all the time, and they're able to multitask um, very effectively. So there's some of the, um, you know, the, the, the pictures or events that have certainly, um, certainly shaped the, the Gen Ys. So they value diversity. They value change. The web's been around their entire life and they want their work to be meaningful. Well, this is a critical point with Gen Ys. Uh, I've noticed this with the Gen Ys we employ, either in our business or we also have an um, executive retreat and day spa um, near the Gold Coast and, and employ some Gen Ys there. And if they don't feel that their work is adding to the bigger picture or they don't feel their work is meaningful, they're out of there in a flash. They, they move on and they go play in some other pond uh, where their work is going to be, uh, going to be more meaningful. So, um, so there's a little bit about the, um, the, the different uh, generation types. Now, this might be an interesting time just to have a little uh, summary slide of all of those, including the traditionalists. Now, I haven't played with the older traditionalists today in detail. Um, understand they're there, but there's very few of them now active in the workforce. Um, so I felt just going into some detail on the boomers, Gen X and Gen Y was more the way to go. But you can see a little summary there. The boomers slogan, thank God it's Monday. They want to come to work. They're about a stellar career. They're working to live. Um, and they're, um, you know, the up, the, the, sorry, they're, they're willing to learn they're non-authoritarian and you need to provide them with personal challenges. Uh, whereas Gen X, that's work to live, they're technically savvy, they dislike close supervision, um, supervision. so you know, give them some, roothing, some breathing space. I'm a great believer in the tight, loose philosophy. You know, here's what's tight, this has to happen according to these parameters, but this stuff is loose, so you make some decisions about that. 
Um, they dislike you looking over their shoulder too much and they love feedback. Um, you know, they're, they're generally feeling a little bit of a chip on their shoulder sometimes, Gen X, because what's going to happen most likely is the wealth that the boomers have is going to pass pretty quickly from them to Generation Y. So they, they, they talk in financial circles about this big wealth transfer that's going to happen, um, and it'll leap pretty quickly from the, uh, the boomers to the Gen Ys. You know, the Gen Ys will be left something in the wills of the grandparents and Gen Xs won't get it all. So uh, they, they can be a, 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 little bit, um, you know, a little bit negative about all that stuff and, uh, and like a, bit of, a little bit of feedback. Gen Y, they're the upcoming optimists. Um, techno technologically, they're superior. Um, you know, if I need anything done from a technical front around the uh, around the home, then I'm asking my kids to do it. I'm not getting involved because they can handle it real easy and real quick. Um, they actually are very respectful of the traditionalists going all the way back to the generation before the baby boomers. And there's a suggestion that, that Gen Y are taking on some of the traits of the traditionalists, so the great-grandparents. Uh, because they've seen what's happened to their grandparents and their parents, and so they're looking for another answer. Uh, they don't want to repeat the same, um, you know, the same pain that uh, that some of us have uh, have experienced. Um, what they desperately need is a little bit of a uh, little bit of structure. So there's there's a high level overview just to kind of summarise it onto uh, onto one slide. Uh, now we might go to the second poll yep. before I start talking about you know, some tips and suggestions around managing them more effectively and motivating and leading them or just working with them, um, the different generation types. How about we go to the second poll where we'll get some feedback from you as to which generation type do you have the most challenges managing and or motivating? So, you know, assuming, um, you know, those of you who do have people reporting to you, then perhaps, um, you know, or maybe we broaden the question for people who don't, uh, you know, which generation type do you have the most challenges just interacting with would kind of generate, um, broaden this question one level. So give us an answer, A, B or C, baby boomers, Gen X or Gen Y, and depending on your answers here, will skewer where I spend the rest of my time during this, uh, during this webinar. So how, how are we looking there, Sarah? Great, they're coming through quite quickly. So. Mm -hmm. We'll just close the poll now and then we'll share the results. Mm -hmm. It's surprisingly quite even. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> All right, excellent. Um, I normally see a little bit of a skewer towards um, Generation Y as a, as a general rule, but um, Gen X has got, the, uh, has got the vote here. All right, that might be influenced given we've got Boomers and Generation Y online, who um, in some cases, you know, well, in all cases, have to interact with Gen Xs, absolutely. So, um, all right, now, from, from here, um, what I wanted to play with was some tips and suggestions about how to adjust your style to that of the different generation types. So as an o, you know, even to chunk up one more level, you've got the goals of each generation kind of expressed in front of you there. The traditionalists wanted to build a legacy that they could pass on to their generation. That's why they, um, you know, they went out and fought wars to preserve freedom and the legacy. Uh, baby boomers, they want to build a stellar career. The Gen Xers want a portable career, and Gen Ys want to build a parallel career. So they want to really look. Um, they, they want to look towards what can I learn from this experience that I can also apply to the 14 other careers I'm going to have as a Gen Y. Um, because let's understand, people are living longer. Every five years, the medical world increases the average lifespan by one year. So, for example, by the time the Gen Ys get to their 70s, the average age that people are living will be well and truly towards 100. They're going to be around for a long time. And, and I say to people, if, if your goal is to retire at 63 or 65, that's fine. Absolutely you know, respect that. 
but keep in mind that medical technology will keep you alive a lot longer and if you've got 30 years in front of you, is gardening for 30 years really going to make you feel fulfilled or is travelling around Australia in the, um, you know, with the four-wheel drive and the caravan, that's a long time to be doing it for 30 years. So you know, the Gen Yers are going to, they're going to work longer they are definitely going to live longer and they are going to transit through deliberately different careers. Um, you know, I know at age 60 I'm going to be doing something completely different linked to what I've been doing and all the skills I've amassed will assist me, but it will be, you know, something completely different during that era of my 60 to, um, you know, to, to 70s. So let's look at some different, uh, some tips and tools that go with each of the generation types. And what I've got here for you, I'm, I'm, not going to, um, I'm not going to put this up on screen. I'm going to talk to some suggestions with each of them. And as a bonus for actually turning up at the webinar, I'm going to ensure that this little summary page gets emailed to you. And it's really a, 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 a concise little summary of what motivates each of the three generations types, Boomers, Gen X and Gen Y, some trends on what they actually value and some suggestions about what you've got to do with them to inter interact with them effectively, communicate with them effectively, lead, manage or, or inspire them. So um, let's, let's start with the, uh, with the baby Boomers. In terms of communication, a tip here, they definitely prefer face-to-face. Um, now, don't get them wrong, um, they are quite good adopters of technology once they're given a chance to learn it. Um, my, but it's mainly limited to email. If I look at my parents as an example here, they're quite competent with email, they love it, it's a form of communicating when they absolutely need to, but they prefer to get on the phone and have a chat to you, or they prefer a face-to-face -face conversation. So they'll use email to forward on, you know, humour and funny things and to stay in touch with their friends, but they'll still divert more to the phone or uh, or face to face. So, you know, in in terms of communicating with them, pull a meeting together, have a one on one with them, talk directly to them rather than put it in an email. Um, and again, not wanting to kind of generalise too much, but as a rule, you won't find the baby boomers hooking up to um, you know, Facebook and Twitter and these sorts of social media. Uh, some will, absolutely, and yet it won't be the norm for the bulk of the, uh, of the baby boomers. So their values and their drivers in a nutshell, they really value recognition, the title um, that, you know, I've earned it, so respect me, uh, this is why they, they show disdain towards the youngies who don't respect what they've achieved and the hard work they put into building our nation for us. Um, so uh, there's a little bit about, uh, about the baby boomers. Now, Gen X. Gen X. Um, regardless of what generation type you're from, could I perhaps... Um, could I perhaps suggest you learn their language and speak it? Because Gen X is kind of, um, you know, they're, they're in their, what, their late 30s and their 40s now and they're, they're coming into their own. You're going to have to relate to them. Um, you will probably report to one at some stage um, or you will employ them to be major drivers of your businesses or, or your, your departments and divisions. So um, get to know their language and, and learn how to uh, learn how to speak it. Email is their primary communication tool. Um, you know they, they love it. They are also adopters of of Facebook and Twitter, but sometimes reluctantly and out of necessity. So um, uh, communicate with them via uh, via email. They they enjoy that. Listen to them. You've got to validate Gen X. They, uh, they feel a little bit like the, you know, the, the lost generation in the middle of the, the baby boomers and the Gen Y. So um, you know, acknowledge them, um, validate them. They are going to not like being passed over. So you know, consult with them. 
Uh, some of the, you know, their values and drivers are they actually work to live. They don't live to work. Um, they want that portable career. They want freedom. Um, they want to learn new skills and they absolutely want to be consulted about things. So, you know, involve them in discussions. Certainly then you can cross back over the autocratic line and make a decision, but they like to feel that they've, they've, they've been um, consulted. And then we've got the, uh, the Gen Ys. Um, here's, a little, here's a little bit of feedback about the, uh, the Gen Ys. They are not impressed, as a general rule, by your position by your stature, by your material wealth. Um, you know, they've seen what that's cost you and they're not sure they want to travel down the same path. So with Gen Y, um, and some people have challenges managing and motivating or interacting with Gen Ys, um, here's a little catch cry that I always try to remember with the Gen Ys. Um, they don't care how much they know or how much you know. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Once they know how much you care, they will actually respond to how much you know. Um, so there's a little catch cry I use with them because they're, they're just not impressed by your wealth and, and, and your position. And, and here's a mistake a lot of people make about Gen Y. They talk down to them. They're not stupid, this generation. They've grown up connected in. They can... you know, you know, uh, Gen Ys, you can have a little chuckle to yourself right now. Um, if you want, hit the, the feedback button and laugh or do the ha-ha thing. The baby boomers may not know how to do that, but <laughs> Gen Ys will. All right? No, I'm having a shot at you. But the, the, the Gen Ys, you can have a little chuckle, um, um, you know, about, um, uh, about what I'm you know, where, where I'm heading with all this, because you can, you can actually relate to it as Generation Y, you're nodding your heads when I, uh, when I kind of say this, uh, this sort of stuff. You know, email's too slow for you, and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll agree with that. So, um, yeah, don't talk down to them. They, they actually resent it. Um, internet is their domain. They've been connected in since they, were a, uh, when, since they were a kid. They actually love a virtual coach. You know, so they're, they're actually signing up online for their, their, um, you know, their professional development and doing, not waiting for the company to provide it. Um, but they've, you know, Gen Y, I'll bet, I'll absolutely bet that when this webinar came on, you've Googled me. You saw I was hosting it, you've Googled me and had a little bit of, you know, done a bit of background and you've probably done it from your mobile smartphone as distinct from the baby boomers who got online at home at their PC or at, uh, or at the office. So, you know, key distinctions between the, uh, between the two. And don't forget that key driver with Gen Y, they dislike being bored. So it's all about diversity with them. So shake it up, give them a new challenge, give them a little project to be part of um, if you lead or, uh, or manage one. And try and add something into their work so that it becomes meaningful and um, you know, their work is meaningful to them. So there's a few tips, a few thoughts on, on what you need to do. I've summarised all that into a, a simple one page called Generation Preferences. And, um, um, and we're going to make sure that that's emailed to you in the next 48 hours as a little bit of a, uh, a follow-up so that you've got a takeaway, uh, takeaway tool. Um, so for now, I don't know, is there, um, has there been any questions that we want to deal with now or just open it up for some, some, some questions and we can, we can talk about a few things? Yeah, so we've got a few questions and comments that have come through uh, throughout the last 40 minutes, but mm -hmm. if anyone has any other further questions or comments, feel free to type them in as we're going. Um, so back at the beginning when we are talking about the generational feedback, um, Claire just wanted to know where does that generational feedback actually come from? Okay, so that's coming from um, the Australian Bureau of Statistics does all the analysis of the different generation types. Um, where I go to, and, uh, and I can point you in this direction, I'm a big fan of McCrindle research. So, um, so that's M, little c, big C for Crindle. Uh, C-R-I-N-D-L-E and McCrindle Research do a lot of research into the different generation types so you can go to um, yeah, 
www.ecoscience.com.au and they are a, a research institute that do a lot of work around the generation types. Um, I've also picked up a lot of this from my NLP studies with neuro-linguistic programming and, um, and uh, you know, understanding what's going on in the value set of the individuals and that's led me into becoming fascinated by the patterns that form. Because there's patterns in human behaviour and those patterns come from what happens to people and what happens to a generation shapes the way they, uh, the way they behave. So there's where I'm drawing a lot of this research from and uh, you can go and have a, uh, a broader look at, uh, at some of that if you, uh, if you want. Yeah. All right. um, and Michael, so Michael actually asked, would you also call the baby boomers structured and process driven whereas Gen Y may be unstructured and lateral? Yeah, I, I would go along with that. Gen Y are more flexible in their thinking and, um, and, and lateral as a, as a natural tendency. Uh, I, you know, the feedback is they, the Gen Ys need structure, but certainly the baby boomers come from that era of, um, of actually developing and building the structure for us. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there was a discussion started and it's sort of gone through the last 10 minutes or so started by Greg and that was on Generation Y and leadership that they respond probably the best out of all the generations when it comes to leadership. Would you agree with that? When, you, when, when, we, talk, when we say respond to leadership, um, can, just, I'm, I'm just looking for a context there. So uh, I don't know if... Um, that they're very responsive to good leadership. Right, yeah. okay. So someone yeah. actually mentoring them and yes. guiding them. Yeah, if someone is walking the talk, mentoring them, guiding them on the journey, in other words, if they have shown that they care about the person, the Gen Yer, then the Gen Yer will absolutely respect and uh, and value what they're saying, and they and they appreciate them as a great leader. Then, um, but you know they don't respond well to, and it's why sometimes the baby boomers and the Gen Yers can clash a little because they don't respond to leadership that simply I've earned the right, so you respect me and do as I say. They want you to demonstrate that you understand them first and then they'll acknowledge and care about your experience and take your advice, yeah. Mm -hmm. And just on Gen Y as well, would you say that they have a greater social conscience? Gen Y, social conscience? Um, I'm Gen X, so I don't have one, so I don't understand <laughs> what you're talking about, really. No, um, yes, yes, because they have seen, um, they have seen and lived through what, they've seen live on CNN what happens when people don't have a good social conscience. So they, um, I, I noticed that certainly in the Gen Ys and even more so in the Gen Zs that are coming up fast on their, uh, fast on their heels. Yeah. I also noticed a little question there about is LinkedIn more in tune with, I think it was, I think they were talking about baby boomers, were they? Just trying to get back to the question. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, LinkedIn is certainly, in terms of social media, the, the winner as far as business professionals are concerned. So um, you'll find Gen X are taking it up like there's no tomorrow and baby boomers would have been one of the early adopters saying, well, out of all of the options I've got, you give me Facebook, you give me Twitter, you give me uh, LinkedIn, I'm going to go with LinkedIn because it's more of a professional um, you know, network of um, uh, network. But I think you'll find if you go talk to LinkedIn and look at the statistics, then Gen X is fast taking over. Yep. Mm. All right. So any other questions? We've got, um, got a bit of time now for specific questions. Any coming through? No, that seems to be off. That huh? seems to be the lot. Well, look, I um, I wanted to finish up just by making a uh, a couple of a couple of statements. I want to go right back to that original slide, and uh, you know that the generation types give you some indication, but don't forget, everyone has a uniquely individual set of beliefs and values, and what's more important is you understand the individual that you're relating to, communicating with, coaching, leading, managing or having to report to for that matter rather than necessarily the generation type they, uh, they, they come from. But it does give you a little um, rule, of, rule of thumb. And as always I wanted to make available, I have a series of um, free e-tip sheets that people can actually subscribe to 
and therefore once a month I'll just pop up in your inbox. They're a simple little one pager that gives you some tips around communicating effectively the different generation types. I've got a whole series on that, as well as broad self-leadership and leadership principles and skills. So if you've found any of this useful and you want to be part of that, then, um, then come join the community and get those free tip sheets. But uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, that's the best I've been able to accumulate and got around generation types. Um, I hope that's equipped you with some practical tools and I'll make sure that generation preference one pager actually comes through to you which is really a summary of everything we've actually um, uh, talked about today. So all the best, thanks for your feedback, I can see a few people saying thank you. Um, yeah. Go apply all this stuff and uh, good luck. Yeah, great. Um, and on behalf of Redback, we'd just like to thank Ian once again. Um, always a pleasure having him online and always a little bit of a laugh as well. Um, I've typed in Ian's um, web address there, so if you have any further questions or you'd like to sign up to the community, please feel free to do so. Also, um, just keep a look out uh, once you complete the exit survey. If you complete that, um, you will actually receive an email within 48 hours with a recording and also those notes that Ian promised. Um, so thanks once again. Um, we look forward to seeing you at future webinars and enjoy the rest of your day. Baby boomers have already gone back to work, but the rest <laughs> of you get going. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>